Welcome back to the green room. Um, Hosking's stressing his age. <laughs> <laughs> um, dirty politics. They, they, they went there straight away. Yeah. Um, what do you make of the book and what it implies? The book shows, I think, the tactics that National has been using for some time to do two different things, present this nice face of Mr Key and this very um, underhanded set of politics. We saw this happen in 2005 with National and the Exclusive Brethren, so we've known for some time, the country has, that this was a tactic that they've been using. The, um, the extent of it, though, I don't think anybody really realised, and how dirty it got. The fact that Judith Collins is still a minister is an absolute disgrace, and John Key has handled this appallingly. He's behaved like a National Party candidate and not like the Prime Minister, who the people should trust to hold his ministers to a much higher standard than that. Mm. And yet, if you look at the public response, if it's benefited anyone, it's Winston Peters, who's effectively a no-confidence vote. Um, has this done... I wonder whether this story being, being the dominant story in the election campaign has done exactly what Nikki Hager was worried about. It has put people off politics. It's hard to say. I mean, <clears throat> yeah, I mean we don't really know. I mean, uh, as it kind of percolates out, I mean, I think a story like this will keep percolating through the campaign. Um, it's hard to tell at the moment, but clearly it has had some negative effect on National. I mean, the fact that you know the Prime Minister's office basically broke into the Labor Party database, um, and the Prime Minister says that's okay. I mean, I think you know people who realise that will think, my goodness, is this really the Prime Minister we need? Yeah. I, I actually think um, people are feeling, will be feeling very despondent about the nature of politics as a result of these um, these allegations. But I think it's also a motivator. You know, in the book, Simon Lusk is there saying it's good to have low turnout for the right, and we know that that's true. So the only way we can get our country back is if those who don't agree with those politics yeah. get out and vote. That is the only option we've got. So it's so for me in talking with people, it's a real motivator to say it's your country. If if you want it, if you want to have control of it, you have to go and get it. Otherwise, you leave it to people like that to control it for you. Right. How's your ground game? Because that's been a criticism of the Greens in the past, that, that, that you have the sentiment, but you don't actually get people to the polling place. What are you doing this time? We've been phoning thousands. We're phoning thousands of people a night. Um, we've got this incredible ground campaign that's door knocking and leafleting people, like thousands of volunteers who are doing this work for us because they love our co-papa and they really do want to see a change of government. They want to see the Greens a really strong part of that new government. So we have really stepped up. That's part of the responsibility of being the third largest political party is that actually we are much more engaged on the ground um, and our campaign team is doing a great job of it. So I think it's the best we've ever seen. I don't, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm yeah. with you. I'm with you. <laughs> but you're yeah. not you're not contesting an electorate seat no. seriously. No. Will that will that come? Well, it may come and in where time. Will it, be? it may come in time. Um, and there's there's different theories about how that might work. But we know that the best strategy for the Greens so far, and the reason why we've grown, is because we have been clear. It is the party vote that gets the Greens back into Parliament. Only the party vote will make a difference. The party vote will get Russell and I back in, and a big, strong team to be an influence on a government. So because we've been so clear, I think that's why we have grown. I think some of the other smaller parties who have declined in their vote, it's because they've been desperate to put resources in one or two seats, and that's taken away from their overall campaign. Also, they, they lost kind of sight of their co-papa. I mean, whatever yeah, you might think of ACT, I mean, <coughs> they kind of lost their way in terms of what they were supposed to be about. Yeah, yeah they lost their way philosophically. Didn't yeah, they? yeah, they did. Yeah. Whereas yeah. we've, you know, we've tried, and I think we've achieved it, we've tried to stay really close to our principles and why we're here um, and tried to stick to that. So, yeah. The party vote campaign helps with that because then when we go out, we can say, it's not, I'm not here just for myself to get myself into parliament because I want a new job. I actually want our whole co up there and our candidates when they're out there saying, we want our caucus in there and these are people that we back. So at every level we are campaigning for the co-papa and for the whole of the party, not just for our individual selves. Right, those other guys are back. So um, see, you, see you soon and we'll see you on the other side. <laughs>